Welcome to Risk Minds International. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Emma. There's been much talk this week, obviously, about where we are in the cycle. It's been the most long-running yeah. benign cycle on record, and uh, at some point, everyone's talking about the bubble bursting. Right. Um, tell me about that and what risk managers are talking to you about that in terms of what it look, what this recession is going to look like if it hits. It's absolutely a huge issue, and it should be because recessions have major effects on banks and on the larger financial system. So I'm glad there's the focus. I agree with you. It's been a very long running cycle, so you have to figure it ends soon. Nobody's good at predicting timing, but it has to be fairly soon. But as you implicitly pointed out, there is a real issue. Even if we knew the timing, it's at least as important to have a sense of what the recession will look like. And when I look back historically at recessions, they fall into three buckets. So one bucket are like the one we had 10 years ago. They're created by financial crises. In fact, that used to be the predominant form before we got central banks and before they got reasonably good at what they did. But they obviously still happen, as we're uh, still feeling from 10 years ago. Uh, I don't think the next one will look like that, because we've done so much on financial stability. Historically, a second bucket has been inflation-induced financial uh, recessions. So inflation would start spiraling out of control, and central banks would step in, raise interest rates to deal with that problem, even at the risk of creating a recession. And again, that was a very common type. Right now, it's hard to see in the advanced economies inflation anywhere. So it's unlikely that will be. So I think much more likely the next recession will be in this third bucket of just general business cycle recessions. And do you think there will be other factors such as the sort of geopolitical climate and in instability around the world to consider in terms of trade wars and things like that as well? Oh, ab absolutely. But in general, if an economy is in pretty good shape, it can shake off anything except a major war. Uh, even like trade wars and things themselves do not usually create recession. Though I suppose you could build a case where it might happen. So how should risk managers be preparing with all of that in mind and who will be best placed in that environment to do well? I think it's a variety of things. First, I'm a strong believer in scenario planning, especially since the next recession may look quite different than the last one. Um, and one of the issues is we're in a much more service-oriented economy now, less of a classic manufacturing economy where recessions add a certain shape to them. So I think it's important risk managers really think through what are the plausible ways the recessions might play out. So that's a start. But beyond that, at least for the stronger banks, it makes sense to think about how can they kind of win in the recession. Now, nobody wins in the absolute sense. Recessions cause too much harm for that. But if you come out significantly better positioned than your competitors, then in the ensuing upswing, you can do very well. And that's, I think, where the focus needs to be. So it's quite a long-term outlook, really, isn't it? Well, it depends what we call long-term. It could be, say, a three-year outlook. I mean, even if you look back at the great financial crisis that we had, uh, J.P. Morgan significantly reshaped itself by buying Bear Stearns to fill in a bunch of gaps on the capital market side and buying WAMU to fill in a West Coast exposure that it really wanted in the retail business but was never able to get. Now, it's easiest to envision that when you do big acquisitions, but there are a lot of ways you can do this. Even like the credit card companies are well aware that some of them in the last recession, maybe halfway through, started actively getting new accounts because there, were a, there was a lot of customer interest just out there that weren't being served by the other, uh, the other providers. And picking them up at that point, you could cherry pick, get the best ones, and they were very loyal afterwards because you took them at a time other people couldn't. So what role do you think the very best CROs will play in all this and, and where will the leadership come from in an environment like that? I think c CROs, because they're a core part of the management team, have a real role in the overall strategy of looking at how do 
uh, the managers want to position the bank? Uh, and what are the things they could do to get there? And many of those involve inherently some significant element of risk. So then risk managers are there to help calculate the risks, but they don't have to be the, the classic risk manager who just says no, but they could, they could say, this way of doing things has this level of risk. There's another way to get at it which has less risk and helps you get to the same place. So there's so much that a CRO can do and a recession brings out all the key issues. This is the largest gathering of, of professionals from the risk world. Uh, what do you hope is the key message that people take away this week? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I do think the customer centricity argument is an important one. Uh, that's a really difficult balancing act for a risk manager because if you do it wrong, customer centricity could mean basically letting the business line leaders push you around because they say the customer really needs this, this, and this. So you still have to have a discipline, but you have to find a way to apply that discipline uh, to achieve the business objectives. I mean, you should always be doing that, but customer centricity brings this out even more strongly. Fascinating insights. Thank you so much for joining us. Great to talk Thank to you. Thank you.